Hello, Reed Redden here, uh, Texas A&M Sheep and Goat Extension. Uh, gonna talk to you today about ram fertility. And with me, we have Jordan Moody. Jordan is starting her PhD program here at the AgriLife Center in San Angelo. And Jordan's main focus for her PhD work is gonna be on ram fertility. Often within the research world, we've fo kind of focused on ewes and how to improve fertility in the ewes, but maybe we've overlooked um, some things in the rams and some, some needed research is out there. But just on the basic level, what should ranchers do to start assessing ram fertility or infertility? So I think the first thing that they can do is conduct a breeding soundness exam. So they can walk up to their rams, evaluate them for body condition score, feet and legs, as well as teeth, because all of these things are going to be really important so that ram can maintain condition throughout the breeding season, do his job, and cover as many ewes as possible. All right, so if a rancher feels uncomfortable with this, who would they go out to and what kind of uh, services would they expect if they're reaching out to their veterinarian to do this for them? So you go to your veterinarian and your veterinarian is going to do the same visual assessment that you do at home but then they additionally might take a scrotal circumference measurement and then they also might take a semen sample and evaluate that sample for the morphology or the shape of the sperm and the motility or how well it moves. Okay, so you take your rams in and a few of the rams test poorly. What are common causes that uh, would relate to a ram that's going to have a poor semen test? So a big cause of ram infertility, especially here in the West, is B. ovis or Brucella ovis. Okay, so Brucella ovis, tell us a little bit more about that one. So Brucella ovis is a bacterial infection. Um, it primarily affects rams and it causes inflammation in the epididymis, which is located in the bottom part of the testicle. So it's transmitted from ram to ram and sometimes from ram to you. Okay, so rams are giving them to other rams and can really mess up that, that ram battery. So if a person is concerned about this, how do they test for B. ovis? So B. ovis can be in really advanced cases. If you palpate the testicles, you might feel a swollen or inflamed epididymis. That could be an indicator of B. ovis. But really the only way you can test for sure is to take a blood sample and send that into a veterinary diagnostic lab for an antibody test. Okay, now you said this is common in the West. What, you know, do you have a number on research that's been published or studies that have been done on the actual prevalence rate across, you know, Western flocks? So there was a study done in Wyoming that looked at several different flocks and it, it showed that the larger operations had a higher prevalence of B. ovis and some of those flocks had upwards of 30% of their rams infected with B. ovis. Okay, yeah, so commonly they're, they're buying rams from a ram sale that, that tests for B. ovis and they get the large battery, but you know, there might be a deal, their neighbor's got a ram, an extra ram, and you pick one up. Unfortunately, if those have B. ovis, they're going to spread it to the rest of the ram battery in there. So that can be a, a serious problem. Um, while we're on this ram fertility side of things, I also get a lot of questions about um, you know, how many rams should I be using to breed, say, 100 ewes? What's a general recommendation or what are the things that go into uh, kind of adjusting that recommendation? So I think the standard recommendation is about three to four rams per 100 ewes, especially in the West. But things to consider are the size of the pasture that you're breeding in, the total number of sheep or number of ewes that you're going to have in that pasture, and how many other uh, rams you're going to have, and if you're going to test before you turn out rams. Okay, so if y'all have been following our YouTube channel or Facebook page, um, you may have seen some of the research that uh, Jake Thorne, who's another PhD candidate at the lab, has been doing with parentage testing of lambs. And one of the things that we're finding out is, you know, sometimes 75% of a lamb crop was sired by 25% of the sires. Uh, what do you think's going on there? And, and, you know, what can you share our audience about that? I think a few contributors to that are going to be infertility of some of your ram battery and lack of testing and lack of uh, breeding soundness exams before the breeding season. Additionally, uh, libido can play a role and competition between other rams can also play a role. Okay, so libido. Tell us a little bit more about libido and kind of how that factors into this scenario because you know a lot of these studies that he's done, these rams were checked beforehand and, and it wasn't an infertility. So what is libido and is there a test for that? So libido is basically a ram's drive to breed ewes and a ram's drive to compete with other rams 
to breed ewes. So sometimes you might just get a ram that's a dud and he just doesn't want to go out and cover ewes. And that could cause, that could be a huge money suck for you. And uh, it could cause him to sire a fewer amount of lambs than the rest of the ram battery. All right, well, good deal. Well, thanks for tuning in and uh, watching uh, this video on ram uh, fertility or infertility for that. So stay tuned and we'll see you at the next video.